السلام علیکم سعیدی وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ on the subject of portals and dimensions are the heavenly realms and domains of punishment sharing physical space on upon earth and do the saints guides and punishing angels act as gatekeepers <coughs> navigators i have no idea what that means so you got me there nothing is on earth but it occupies the space on earth there's no <coughs> physical hell on this earth but there are dimensions on this earth we said before that there are layers this creation has layers so there are good energies bad energies and these are layers in which they can enter into these layers of reality physical hell and these things something different anybody want to to understand like difficulties a hospital emergency room is like a physical hell you hear screaming yelling crying complaining but a dimension in which you open on the earth and you'll see like fire inhabitants of fire beating people no these are of a spiritual nature <clears throat> as salam alaykum sayyidi wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah see last week uh, you said that the electromagnetic frequency is the jinn fluorescent light television and there are infinite spectrums how do we negate to enter into that ocean of light i i don't think we said that though we we'll get your credit for we said that jinn are energies so we have energy all around us so they come and move through that energy they are not the fluorescent light but they can move through the energy of these creations they come through the tv they are not the tv so they're an energy being and they can move through that energy and manipulate our devices and our world and all of this is not to live a life of fear because knowledge is power not knowledge is fear they're not illuminating us to make us to be scared of everything but illuminating and knowledge is power so any that which you know Allah will dress the servant so the the reality is to make the connection build the energies fortify yourself live a life that's proactive and not reactive if we teach you that everything around you is beating you and trying to harm you assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh this is Shaykh Nur John thank you for watching the video that you're watching Inshallah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The question is not, you know, how, how oh, they're going to hurt me, they're going to hurt me. But the understanding has to be proactive that, Ya Rabbi, grant me strength. I have to, to be strong now. These things are going to be attacking me, they are attacking me, they are affecting my family and my, my condition in life. So it's the zeal in which to have strength, that you have to have a strength, you have to be making a connection, you have to be making your spiritual connection. Don't base your life on that you made salah because your salah may not even be counting if shaitan is inside of you. You have to base it based on your spiritual practices as well. You do that which is voluntary, don't put any reward on it because you didn't get there yet, right? You say, oh I make wudu, shaykh, okay but shaitan already inside of you so you're, you're not going anywhere. Your real wudu should have been with your blood and your heart. Then the physical wudu will have a power because your inner wudu, zikrullahi tatma'ina qulub. So for everything you think you're doing physically, you should have had a matching spiritual, right? So people pray, 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 the, the Daesh they prayed too. You think that counted? 
nothing. It was gone, it was destructive and they were burning and torturing people. Why? Because the inner shaitan of them was conducting those prayers. That's why they pray, not a prayer will go up because the shaitan and the bad, bad being inside of them blocking it. So the spiritual training is teaching us we have to do both. You have to pray acknowledging that my prayers don't really count, I'm going to do this because Allah asked me to do it. But Ya Rabbi grant me to train spiritually so in which that my spiritual training and my spiritual practices are strong. Now when I make salah I'm making it with a pure heart, clean heart, an energized soul, that salah counts. Because it's near to the presence of Allah The shaitans inside that person have been diminished. What they begin to ask Allah is granting. So it has to do with all the spiritual practices to be done simultaneously. That's why the Hadith al-Qudsi, they did their fad and now they approached me through voluntary worship. I became the hearing in which they hear, the eyes in which they see, the mouth in which they speak. Is Allah's dressing their light. But imagine a, a, a world of people that don't do any spiritual practices and they think that they went to Jummah and they, they accomplished something great. Every devil's still inside of them. They, the Jummah went with the devil too, that it didn't do anything. And therefore, see the weakness of the community. But if everybody sat for the halakas of zikr and, and entered into these portals of power in which these halakas are not even allowed in a masjid. So the, the paradise is not allowed in these masjids. So how much of that masjid actually represents heavens? Hmm? How many of the masjids in this area allow the halakas of zikr? Then go and ask them, the Prophet described this halakah as a paradise. If this is a house of Allah why there's no paradise allowed in it? So it means this, this is the, the corrupt nature of where we are now in our time. This is an immense jahaliya, immense time of ignorance. That's why the tariqahs they hold this reality of Islam and the perfection of iman and maqam al-ihsan. So perfect the inner being, strengthen the inner being. Then when you do the practices they have a power, they have a connection. So this is all about building the connection, building the strength and overcoming these fears of these dangers and these difficulty. And that's why shaitan is, is blocking people, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Sayyidi, would doing a lot of any certain ibadah with consistency and high sincerity like sujood, sadaqah, fasting, forgiveness, tawbah, open a portal in relation to that ibadah like Laylatul Qadr? Allah can open whatever Allah wants to open. There's an exception and there's a rule. Each has a reality and a dress so the, each has its own reality. Again the one whom is spiritual, spiritual training and all their practices, their sujood is an immense portal. We've described that before. The sujood is the apex of salah. The one whom prays and disciplines himself but more, more beneficial that he served, he meditated, he made lots of salawats. As soon as he prays and disciplines his physicality and goes into sujood, He's the closest to the Divinely Throne that he can ever achieve. And Allah will allow his own reality to come to greet him in his sujood. So that's the power of sujood. So definitely sujood is a, is, a, is a portal. If the servant is doing what the tariqahs are teaching, go out be of service, do your taskiyah, do your zikr, do your cleansing, do all these salawats and love for Sayyidina Muhammad so that the servant has a khushya and a softness within their heart. As a result of that softness they often go into sujood and cry. Why are they crying in sujood? Because Allah's lights and energies are right there. What we mean by that is Allah will send your soul that is always in His Divinely Presence up to greet you. As soon as that soul comes close to you, you begin to cry and, and scream istighfar. 
Because that soul will remind you like a lost companion, you forgot what you promised uh, Allah up here? And begin to cry and repent and have remorse because this is the reality of sujood. Your soul is not with you to destroy, your soul is in Allah's presence always. Allah will allow that light to approach your sujood and the closer that light comes to you the more you'll cry because you remember what you promised and you feel the, the, the warmth and the love of the Divinely Presence. So each of them is a portal. The one whom gives and gives out food he may begin crying and giving out food and feel the compassion and the nearness because there's hadith of that. That if you cleaned yourself, purified yourself, Allah said, why you didn't see me when I was sick? Why you didn't feed me when I was hungry? But the dead hearted they don't feel that. Those whom have a, a love for Divine the Presence Allah will greet them. Everywhere they go they'll see Allah's Allah Allah's in every emotion. They'll feel the emotion of that person's gratitude is Allah's Allah's light and energy grasp them to show thankfulness to His creatures. Even the serving of animals and other creatures, every kind act with a soft heart you will meet your Lord, you'll be close to your Lord. Every emotion and nearness Allah is in those emotions. So everything, everything is a portal. It just requires a good heart, a soft heart, a loving heart. Takes away our state of heedlessness and that's the beauty of what the tariqah is training. Train your heart to be soft. Train your heart to have an immense love, an immense compassion and you find Allah in everything you do and you won't have to ask these types of questions. You'll know. Allah's closer to you than your jugular vein if you could feel that reality in sujood and in everything you do you'll feel that reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. She just answered this, how does a servant realize that he is progressing in servanthood? How does he know that his boat is down? Forgive my ignorance. By the good character. You'll know it's not something you have to wonder, it's not something you even have to ask. How do you know when you're good? In, in Divine the Presence it's the immense love you have for Allah You can't have a love for Allah that He didn't put into your heart first because who you think is the greater, you or the Creator? The love that you have and the actions that you exhibit are from Him. When He loves you, He makes you love Him and you're sincere in that love and you're so in love that you want to make Him happy. And as a result He said, I love Prophet oh I'm going to make you happy because I'm going to love Prophet more than I love myself. And that's their sign of how they want to make Allah happy. They're looking for what makes you happy. قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُهِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ As a result of that following and that doing they're continuously under the love and grace of Allah If they didn't feel that love they wouldn't be doing that. Allah push them to love Prophet love whom I love as a result they're lost in that love. Go out and serve people, they go out and serve people. Go out and do what you can to raise people, lift people, give them hope. And as a result they're continuously under a Divine gaze and a Divine light and a Divine love. They don't have to ask themselves, I wonder if Allah is happy. They wouldn't do it, you wouldn't do it more than a week. 
The only reason that they have the fuel to keep going is because it's not from them, right? Your battery would have been dead a year ago, a month ago. If there was no himma and, and, and zeal and, and energy coming to the heart and soul of people, if they're doing it right, the himma that is driving them is Allah's love that powers their battery. People say, I don't know how you guys do that. How you do it is Allah has to be the power that powering you. If it's not Allah's power, nothing will make you do it. You walk away from everything. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi As Salaamu Alaikum Are Yajuj and Majuj, are they coming from a portal, a different dimension? Yeah. Well, I don't know, according to that one shaykh, he said there was a place near Russia or something and he was telling people where it was. I said, don't tell people where it is because you don't want them to dig him out. Leave <laughs> that alone. <laughs> he was making videos, the portal is here, why would you do that? <laughs> If Allah wants to keep them out, you want to go there and, and remind them, hey, say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, because then they're going to come out the next day. No. So th these, are, these are realities that are not open into this dimension. So it's veiled, that, that reality is veiled so that people don't find it, they don't come out and that's something different, inshaAllah. Right now there are the inheritors of Juj and Majuj. <laughs> they eat and drink everything and that was the sign. They're a race of people, they eat and drink everything. There's nothing that they don't consider a <laughs> delicacy. So that, that, that is enough for you of a sign of Juj and Majuj is real. Now when those guys come onto this earth, Inshaallah we're, we're gone by then, that's after Sayyidina Mahdi and, and after the, the 40 years of Sayyidina Isa salam, which are 40 golden years of its time not known, not understood what type of 40 years that is, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Mulana mentioned that when Sayyidina Mahdi salam appears, those who want to be with him sincerely a circle of light will open in front of them and those who step in will be with Sayyidina Mahdi. Can you please explain uh, in this reference to portals? <clears throat> in the physical or in the spiritual? We've, we've described from their teaching all the time that all our spiritual practices is to open up a timeless reality. So everything of Islam is timeless. So you have to believe what Prophet described that from now to judgment day Prophet gave us this Armageddon, that there are battles going to come, there are disasters going to come, why? So that you believe, otherwise you can't be prepare for judgment day. The point between the two was the rahmah of Prophet the difficulty coming, prepare for it by your boots. Put food in your house, uh, have everything prepared as if you know you heard that the destruction of the world is coming tomorrow but you work every day as if life is going on forever. As a result of acting on what Prophet brought for us, your iman and faith will be opened. So if you're in the portal of this training of the unseen. You're training, 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 you got your boots, you did all of the physical signs of belief. Then when you're sitting and meditating, no doubt Sayyidina Mahdi will begin to appear to you because it's only through his light, through his sword that protects us to even talk to you now. This knowledge that they're teaching from Qur'an, you don't find it in a book, you won't find it in a book. And the only reason they haven't stopped us is because his sword is over our head. So it all comes from the spiritual connection because Allah has no time. So those whom you love, Prophet described, you be with whom you love. So when you enter into that portal of unseen, train with them, you're in the world of light with them. They're all in that light and there's no time. So when you travel to Damascus, 
And they say that Sayyidina Isa is going to be descending onto this earth from this, mim- from this minaret. But he's always descending. So if you sit and meditate there, you feel the presence of Sayyidina Isa because it's a portal, it's a tajalli. When Allah gave reference to something, it's a continuous tajalli because Allah has no time, there's no clock up there saying, ink, gotta go. But Allah is giving an energy that is an eternal energy and an eternal dress. Now when the physical event happens, it's something else. But we don't wait for the physical, you want to experience it in the world of light. So only by training and training and training what happens? You build your connection with the shaykhs. Then you see that the shaykhs, their majlis is always in the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam, Sahib al Waqt, he's the owner, Sahib al Imdad. There is no madad from any shaykh if not from the hand of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam on this earth right now. And the center of that is Imam Ali Salam's power. That's why when you read Nadi Ali, it describes he's holding the faith to deliver that reality to Sayyidina Imam Mahdi his grandson. So the Muhammadan kingdom is fully in charge and all madad is through them. So that, that, that's, that reality is, is, is already moving upon this earth but requires people to connect, enter into that world, into that portal, to be dressed by it, blessed by it and inshaAllah that is this way of realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah uh, Sayyidi when Sayyidina Ali salam said he has seen Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu once was he giving a sign to us about the portal of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Yeah he was showing his adab not to, to brag but what Sayyidina Uwais al-Qarani was describing was Insana Kamil that have you ever seen Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sayyidina Umar Farooq got a little bit disturbed by that, so who, who do you think we are? And Imam Ali <laughs> came and described, no I think he's asking something spiritual and then began to describe. That was the opening of the realities of Insana Kamil. He wanted to bring that dialogue out, means that Sayyidina Uwais Qarani was, his heart was pushed to ask that so that that dialogue and that reality would come out. And what he described is, I saw the whole of the universe in Muhammadun Rasulullah And I looked all the way up to Arsh rahman to the neck of Prophet above that was the throne of Allah Hence the face of Prophet is the throne of Allah Allah doesn't need a chair, doesn't sit on a chair, Allah sits upon the heart of His servant. So this has to do with the immense reality and the power. The power of the holy face because a chair symbolizes an authority. There's nobody sitting and have to sit on a chair but the chair symbolizes the throne of the king and which powers Allah has gave to that holy face. Wajikil Kareem, Waj Allah is never going to be seen and reflects only to the face of Sayyidina Muhammad Wajikil Kareem, the generous reflection in creation through Muhammadun Rasulullah and then we describe the essences that are dressing that face and as a result that becomes the face of power that all, all these souls are taking from that face and the dress of that reality inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaman an mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream 
every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.